I'm looking good. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Like you already know, we're doing data recovery from a lot of types of devices. We can uh, get your data from HDDs, from SSDs, from flash drives. For example, we can do data recovery from really complicated cases where we have to find a technological pinout from the end and then use it on the adapter like that. Maybe if we're gonna have really nice case to show in the future, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Today, I want to focus on the SSD, which is soldered into the motherboard, Microsoft Surface Pro data recovery, and let's go jump to it. This is our device. And like you can see, someone used can opener to open the device. The screen is missing. The whole heat sink is damaged. And the first what happened, piece of the glass went into my finger. Let's inspect the motherboard under microscope. Like you can see here, somebody used a screwdriver, maybe the knife to pull out the chip from the board, but this NAND is not in the socket. The NAND is soldered into the board and you can't take it out the NAND without the heat gun. To get the board out and start working with the NAND, I have to remove old pieces of the screen. Under it, there are a few screws, which I have to remove. The can opener, a knife or screwdriver, did a lot of damages on the board. So actually from the first uh, second when I saw the NAND, I noticed there is crack in the corner and probably this is the main issue here. This is the perfect example why you shouldn't work on your devices if you have important data on it. You need the data from the devices, but you never worked on the devices like that. Most likely we have a really high success rate with those types of devices. But in this case, everything is possible since the device is damaged like that. Let's remove all of the screws, take the board out and put it on the preheater and take the SSD out from the board.
The glass is taped to the housing with a pretty strong tape. So the best way is use heat gun to heat it up and take the whole thing out. I have to be very careful now because sharp pieces of glass are flying everywhere. The cases where the screen is in the, the one piece are much much easier because then you are able to take the screen out in the one piece and you are able to see the screws which hold the board. Thank God cases like this don't happen often. Once we have managed to pull the board out of the device, let's clean the workstation from the remaining glass and look at the board under a microscope. So like you can see here, left bottom corner is damaged. Take a look at the balls on the left side, how much damage they are. So probably someone used a knife or I don't know, maybe a screwdriver. And he was trying to 
apply actually the chip, the NAND chip. Yeah, this is the same area, but from the different angle. The NAND is damaged in the actually few places, not only in the corner. Now is the time to use the preheater. We don't want to overheat the NAND because we can damage the cells inside of the memory chip. So that's why we're using preheaters like that to heat actually only the PCB and the balls under the chip. Of course, we're gonna need to use hot air gun to heat the NAND chip as well from the top, but still the main heat is coming from the bottom. On the end of this wire, there is a temperature sensor. So I'm gonna be able to read the temperature in the real time. This is really important because we, like I said before, we don't want to overheat the NAND. A little bit of flux. Okay, now we can start it, but first we have to turn on the fume extractor. I thought I'm gonna be able to show you the temperature, but sorry for it. Like you can see uh, on my screens, I'm running a few 
different data recoveries at the same time. Now, when the temperature reaches about 190 degrees Celsius, we can start heating the NAND from the top. When the temperature reaches around 220 degrees, I'm going to start gently tapping the chip to check if all the balls underneath it have melted. At this point, the most important thing is not to tear the pads of the chip. Now we can cool it down a little bit and start working on the SSD itself. Let's put small Zomo on the side. Yeah, so like we can see not only the corner is damaged. To be honest, I don't have high hopes. Here you can see shorted layers. Here as well. And here is solder block. Before I'm going to start working with the shorted layers, I'm going to clean the solder from the pads. The chip is too cool, so I have to use a bigger tip. At least all the pets are in there.
here we have a damaged corner and solder blob. Unfortunately, in this case, there is not much we can do. We have to remove the solder blob and cut off the parts of the chip where there are short circuits between the layers. This piece of metal sticking out worries me a lot. Let's do first check in PC3000 software. To do that, we have to use a special adapter.
here is our tool, PC3000 Portable. Let's plug the adapter into it and let's see what the SSD does. But first, let's forget about the camera changing. Okay, much better now. Mm -hmm. Like you could see, SSD took almost two amps, so the short is still there. We don't have a choice, we need to cut more. I use a Dremel because it is a very precise tool. Using alcohol, I can see much more.
there is too much light here so you can't see it as clearly as I can see it through the microscope. Okay, let's see the other damages. I'm gonna cut it as well. I hope it's going to work, although the chances are really low. Here in the bottom right corner you can see how much current the SSD draws. Yeah, again 2 amps.
Let's use thermal camera to check where exactly the SSD gets hot. By the way, this camera is awesome. I need to push the NAND with the tweezers. And our broken corner gets hot. That's not the surprise for me. Kurwa, zapomnie, zapomniałem jak to powiedzieć. Like you could see, unfortunately it was a no fix. I couldn't get the data because the short was between the layers probably in the corner. It was in the NAND itself, so I couldn't do much. I tried to cut it. I thought I can see separated layers. So I thought maybe everything is okay with the, with the NAND, but I couldn't do anything with that. Unfortunately, there was a lot of damage from the screwdriver or the knife. I'm not sure what the uh, customer used, but the NAND in this case is not in the socket. The NAND was soldered into the, the board and the knife or screwdriver can't help. You need to have a solder station and you have to unsolder the drive unsolder the NAND. That's why I used, I call it small Zomo because it's a preheater. I can preheat the board from the bottom and easily take the NAND without damaging it. I hope you learned something today and like always, don't delay, send me your hard drive today. Take care, have a great day.